Next, let's move on to another hormone called PYY. PYY is also secreted by cells within the intestine, specifically cells that are a little bit later on in the, in the intestine, in the distal GI tract. So that's further down the GI tract. PYY is going to be um, secreted at very, very low levels when we're fasting, but then it's going to increase postprandially and it's going to increase when we are actively digesting food. And the levels of PYY that will be secreted are in proportion to ingested calories. And when we are consuming food that is protein rich, that is going to be an additional stimulant to PYY secretion. So what happens when PYY is secreted? PYY is going to activate uh, the vagus nerve to send signals up to the NTS to induce satiety. So um, PYY will be acting, will be binding to chemoreceptors on the vagus nerve to stimulate the vagus to ultimately stimulate the NTS and induce satiety. PYY is also going to be acting more locally on the, on the GI tract in order to slow gastric motil motility. And again, that's going to have the same effect that just happened with GLP-1, which is that by slowing gastric motility, that means that our GI tract is going to stay stretched and distended for longer, and that distension of the GI tract is going to be activating the mechanoreceptors on the vagus, which will be additionally activating the NTS to continue to induce satiety. So we're activating the vagus nerve in two different ways with PYY. Then if we look at the level of the hypothalamus, PYY can inhibit the agouti-related peptide neurons. And by inhibiting the agouti-related peptide neurons, that means we will not have any of that NPY being secreted. So we will have no inhibition of our POMC neurons. Our POMC neurons can go ahead, release alpha MSH to activate the MC4R, stimulate those neurons in the paraventricular hypothalamus, and ultimately lead to an inhibition of food intake. So PYY is another anorexigenic hormone that is involved in our short-term meal-to-meal food regulation.